Jeremy Rossman from Make School, come on up. <laughs> Ivan Shumkov from Build Academy. <laughs> Hannes Klapper from Iversity. <laughs> Gonzalo Manrique from Iron Hack. <laughs> and Martina, uh, Martina from Edem. Yeah, come on up. Thank you. How you doing? Good. Okay, let's spread out a little. We yeah. Get a little little elbow room here. Yeah? All right. Um, so the theme, the theme of this conversation is uh, learning life and career accelerators or uh, acceleration, right? Uh, one of the themes that we've seen at Learn Capital is that when you can learn online, everyone thinks, oh, it's convenient, it's cheap, it's easy, it's engaging, it's fun. Many people say, if I can use technology to learn, I want to learn faster, better, stronger, right? And so one of my questions, uh, I want every panelist to introduce them, their organization, and how they are accelerating learning or life or career, yeah? Mm -hmm. All right, Martina? Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, first of all, I'm very pleased to be here. Uh, I'm from EDEM, which is a business school in Valencia and has uh, 15 years of experience now. Uh, we are very, very focused on entrepreneurship. So we have different degrees in master and uh, master degrees and bachelor degrees. They are very into entrepreneurship. Uh, what we believe, we, we believe in that you can actually really train the entrepreneurial spirit because you can, you have to, you know that nowadays everything is so changing very rapidly and very quickly. So you have to, uh, to be able to survive, you need to be able to have a very critical mindset, being able to see the opportunities, uh, validate your proposals, having strategies and so on. So making it a little bit shorter, uh, we are very into it, we are doing it in a very practical way. And another big added value that we have is that we are taking part in a bigger project called Marina de Empresas, which means that we we are education, but next to us there is an accelerator and then the financial part. So we cover these three aspects. All right. So you invest in your own people then? In your own Definitely. Students. All right, Gonzalo. Okay. Hello, everyone. I'm super pleased uh, to be here today. Uh, my name is Gonzalo. I'm co-founder of Ironhack. And we want to destroy your university, but not at them. <laughs> uh, Thank you. <laughs> No, I'm only safe. kidding. We, we, we basically want to be an alternative, a uh, viable alternative to, to more, let's say, established uh, educational institutions. Uh, and what we do basically, it's all about accelerating your career and enabling people to transition into tech jobs, right? So we teach people, we started with a program and we teach people how to code in three months. So anyone, independently of their background, uh, if they pass our admissions test, they can, they can, we'll take them to uh, be a junior developer at, at a startup. And you're live here in Spain, right? Uh, yeah, so we're in Madrid, Barcelona, and Miami. We're all in cool places. <laughs> yeah, all right. Very cool. Hannes. All right. Uh, Hannes Klepper, Iversity. Um, uh, we're based in Berlin. We were the first uh, MOOC player uh, in Europe in 2013. So we've built a platform that has, uh, at this point, more than three quarters of a million users from all over the world. We ran a bunch of courses in collaboration with universities, but also with international institutions such as the UN and the EU. And uh, recently, uh, in the last year, we've taken a look at what we've done, the platform we've built, and the didactics we've developed, and thought about how can we use this in a professional development setting. Um, so while, you know, uh, Gonzalo is trying to help people get a job, uh, we are looking at it more from the angle of saying, okay, you know, how can we keep you in business? If you are already successful, how can we make you more successful or, uh, you know, help you remain successful? So we're looking at a bit of older cohort and uh, more mature companies, you know, from late stage startups to large corporates. Ivan. Hi, uh, my name is Ivan Shunkov. I'm CEO and founder of Build Academy. We're based in New York. And we provide professional education and solutions for the building industry, which is basically the entire built environment, including architecture, engineering, real estate construction, and building products. And our mission, in fact, is to improve people's lives by revolutioning the entire building industry through providing education to companies and professionals to build better. 
And how we do it, essentially, is we partner with experts, universities, and top companies in our industry. We create online courses and programs, host them on our platform, and offer them online to professionals, companies, and governments all over the world. Mm -hmm. Jeremy. My name is Jeremy. I'm the founder of Make School. We're a computer science and software engineering school headquartered in San Francisco. And we offer three primary programs. A summer program targeted at high school and university age students where we teach them how to design, program, and launch their first iPhone app. And this happens during the summer vacation. We have multiple cities in the United States and across Asia. The second program we run is a full alternative to university. Students study full time for two years. We have students transferring out of MIT and Harvard to come to make school instead. And graduates are ending up at companies like Google. And they don't pay at first. They pay a percentage of their salary only once they get a job. So the financial model there is interesting. And the third thing we do is we provide curriculum to existing institutions. Right now, there are thousands of students at the high school, undergraduate, and master's level across the United States and in Asia who are learning how to program in classes taught by instructors that we trained using Make School curriculum. So if you know universities, high schools that want to introduce computer science, if you know people who are looking to study computer science for the first time at the high school university age, where are the place to go? Great. Um, so uh, over the past uh, couple decades, the traditional academy right, um, has kind of uh, shrugged off the responsibility for employment outcomes, salary outcomes, uh, and the success trajectory of their graduates. Uh, instead, they kind of hide behind the idea that we're broadly educating, uh, which obviously we think is also very important, right? But one of the things that we've found is that the successful entrepreneurial organizations don't shrug off that responsibility. They take full ownership for the career outcomes of the people that learn with them. So how, how do your organizations take full responsibility for career and salary outcomes of the learners that use your programs? And what does that mean to you? How do you, how do you take responsibility and do you have any metrics or, or transparency metrics that you are w willing to share with the audience? Do you want to start, Martin? Yes, of course. OK. Well, it's very complex, the question. Yes, uh, of course. Let's do it per parts. Yeah. Uh, but before... You have 30 seconds. Go. <laughs> <laughs> OK, then I will just say the most important thing, that yes. uh, even though we are a physical school, yeah, yeah. Uh, we are very modern inside. And we know that to learn and uh, teaching entrepreneurship, you have to do it very actively. We are surrounded by the professionals. And there is the, our biggest added value. The professionals are our teachers. So there are pe people who have experience from the academic, uh, from the universities, doctors. But at the same time, there are executives and uh, important people who have real experience in their companies and entrepreneurs as well. And the case of that case as well, I was an entrepreneur before and I'm now teaching there. So what I wanted to say is that our students have uh, the real experience there. And after the studies, each year, they go to for the traineeship for the, the, to, the, to the school, to the companies which we collaborate with. So we have a really big circle of supporting uh, companies that work with us. Mm -hmm. And that is basically an important networking for the students. And uh, we have, a, for example, we have one course, uh, MBA junior which has 1% uh, uh, success, 100% success in inserting people to the companies so they end up with the careers. 100% success. Yes, yes, 100% yes, success. That's good. Because it's designed in that way. I mean, okay. there's business model behind. Great. Cool. Gonzalo. Yeah. So first of all, yeah, I think uh, it's very important that we realize that uh, students ultimately are hiring universities to get them a job. Mm -hmm. So we cannot shy away from that responsibility. And, uh, and at Iron Hack, that's part of our, uh, our core, right? So we are working with Skills Fund, which is an institution in the United States that funds students to go to boot camps mm -hmm. in order to uh, establish a uniform uh, way to communicate our student outcomes uh, for our industry. I think this is a very important job that we are uh, being part of. Uh, and also, we are, we are working with an uh, independent consultant firm to provide transparency you know, from our end. Once it's decided how to communicate it, then we'll, we'll do it and we'll have it certified by a third party, right? Mm 
Uh, and for us, the metric, we are around uh, 20, uh, nearly 95% within three months of graduation, right? That's our, mm -hmm. our metric. And that's, a blended, that's blended from our three, uh, three campuses. Great. And you're working with McKinsey for their um, bold yeah. initiative, right? Yes. Yeah. So we are, we, McKinsey got together in, somewhere in the States and decided they wanted to solve youth unemployment, uh, which is an amazing goal. Uh, so they started, they targeted a few countries, one of them was Spain, to pilot an initiative that's called Generation Initiative. And then they, in each country, they select, they saw in which uh, kind of skills or areas there were vacancies, right? In Spain, it was uh, web development and marketing, and we're their educational providers. Uh, so we've, we've graduated nearly 300 students and, and have, a, and have a, a success rate or hiring rate of, of around 80%, which, mm -hmm. is, which is amazing because these guys, for them, it's like first employment, and you're talking in a country where we have around 40% unemployment, right? Youth unemployment. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, well, as I said, I mean, professional learning for us isn't so much about getting people a job, but it's you know, working with people that have a job already and uh, making them more successful. It, you know, having an exact metric is slightly difficult. If you look at something like leadership, you know, that's something that pans out over a few years to see whether you know, so, someone benefited from a specific course. But we do, of course, see uh, engagement, and they were pretty happy that we got you know, employees in their mid-40s from Deutsche Bahn to like, actively participate in an online course and you know, work on assignments and submit them online and comment on other people's work and the kind of things that you know, at least the people in the HR department were really skeptical they would do before we started this. Um, but yeah, they liked the usability, and, and, and they did that. And then also we got some nice... Uh, sort of qualitative feedbacks that in that, for example, one of the employees who did our course on visual thinking uh, really adopted that methodology in his day-to-day -day work, and then his boss came back to us and said, I want to take this course as well, because this guy is like using all these tricks now, I want to know how to do this. So that's, uh, that's something that you know, encouraged us that we're on the right track. Yeah, so for us at uh, Build Academy, in terms of metrics, we started with a B2C model, consumer model, and we had over 60,000 people that signed for our courses, and over 3,000 completed them. And many of them have actually started their uh, firms afterwards, mainly in the field of architecture, which is what we started teaching. And after this huge success with individuals, we started working with companies. And right now, um, as Hannes mentioned, when it's about professional education, a lot of companies, in fact, a lot of people who take the courses already have a job, so they're looking to improve their skills or advance within their current career, being more successful at finding clients, being more successful in finding partners, and other uh, professionals to work with. We then um, also started working with governments, and in fact, uh, we, current, we recently won a, a bid in partnership with EY for um, a government in Southeast Asia where we'll be training over 1,000 uh, mid-career professionals. So it's been kind of a natural progression for us to expand from the individuals to companies and then to governments. And um, uh, companies also look at us as an opportunity to innovate. We do a lot of uh, crowdsourcing of solutions, and that's in fact how we started the company by doing these design challenges, because for companies, one of the big uh, uh, problems is to how to be more creative, how to be more innovative, so they see this idea of collaboration, about, uh, of crowdsourcing solutions as a way for them to create new products or to advance within their uh, current working methodology. Mm -hmm. So my student audience is about, I'd say, between the ages of 13 and 23. And as a result, they get a lot of live feedback from that young age on what students are thinking about university. And I think that students uh, right now who are in high school, between the ages of 13 and 18, are more sophisticated than any generation in the past in thinking about university. It used to be when, you know, I'm, I turned 25 last week, and when I was deciding to go to university was just a few years ago. And deciding to go to university was not a uh, educated decision, it was just a, a cultural tradition. You went to university if you were going to be successful, you didn't really think about it more. And I think students' frustration now comes from this dual role that university plays, where it's unclear whether they're trying to help you get a job or just trying to help you be broadly educated and perhaps ready for a master's program or a doctorate program. And we feel that it's our responsibility to offer another choice. We don't have to be the right answer, we can be a right answer. And we target students in our two-year program who already know that they want to get a job. That's the role that they 
uh, that they want us to play is helping them get a job. And right now, those students are across many universities that are not actually fulfilling that role well. And that's why we have students transferring in from schools like Harvard and MIT. At the same time, though, it's, it's quite challenging because we, we see both sides. We run a program or summer programs that cannot lead to education to job outcomes. We have, you know, if a 14-year-old comes to our summer program on her summer vacation, she's not going to be able then to go get a job at Google and pay us for her salary. So we have to charge money directly up front. And at the end of the day, by presenting all the information that we can, we let our customers make an educated decision. We have one program, you have to pay us money initially, and you come for the educational foundations that you get and not for a job. And students still come, they're willing to pay, they understand the value, but they know they're not getting a job. They know there is no career fair. They know that that's the package that they're getting. They're learning how to design, program, and launch an iOS app. And many of them will use that to get a job, but if they're 15, probably not. And they still pay. For the two-year program, because we are taking that role of helping the students get a job, we are putting our money where our mouth is. And if you're running an educational institution where you're going to make that promise to students, then you should be doing our model, which is take no money until they get a job. And that's what we do, and we're seeing a number of other schools follow that model now in the Silicon Valley, and we hope across the world soon. All right. And that uh, uh, leads to a uh, question. Of, uh, this one, uh, because we have five of us and there's only 12 minutes left, <laughs> I want uh, folks to uh, volunteer if you think you have a very, very thoughtful model of working with employers to design and create learning content that is aligned to the skill sets that are needed by employers. So who has the most innovative, thoughtful model here? Anybody? <laughs> Gonzalo, okay. Yeah. Had to raise my hand. Yeah. Um, so we've, what we're uh, doing in terms of, of curriculum and alignment with employers is basically uh, trying to build a kind of wiki curriculum to some extent. Mm -hmm. So uh, by that I mean that uh, we get a lot of feedback and iterate constantly and this feedback not only comes from our curriculum team but we have a semi-open model uh, in which we take feedback from a lot of uh, mentors that are in, in companies that then hire and hiring partners, right? Yeah. So that's the way and obviously there's a tension uh, or could be a tension, right? Potentially each company has different, let's say, uh, ways of looking at what it's needed but that's the role then of our head of curriculum to kind of mainstream and, and implement what we think is best. Mm -hmm. Yep. I think, um, as I said, we are not necessarily training students to then join a company, but still the model I think could also be interesting for the others is that we're working with, for example, agencies that are doing consulting for companies that know these companies well for a long time and know where they have problems and where they lack expertise and that also provides not just consulting service but training services to these companies. And then in a sort of triangular model, we work with the company, the company that's already working with that company knows it well and has the expertise um, to create a course. So we work with the, uh, the agency that's consulting them to create the course that really fits the needs of the company. Uh, um, and, and I think, I mean, they of course know other companies as well. I think that's, that could also be a way to go where you, because you say you work with experts, where you find an expert who's already really plugged into uh, the industry and, and knows you know where the, 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 the needs are so you don't have to go through all the design thinking process of getting to know your clients needs yourself mm -hmm. uh, Yes <laughs> Well, I wanted to add that, uh, that uh, as I said before we are a part of Marina de Empresas So we are under one roof the education part of the university and see the well, educational center then we have the accelerator and the financial part. So imagine that all together, and our teachers are professionals. So in the end, um, naturally, the topics emerge, and if we find them, we put our heads together, and if we find the topic that we have to cover, we just deliver that knowledge to the place. And this is naturally how it occurs, mm -hmm. a part of the curriculum part that we cover. So uh, you, you bring up uh, an interesting question, which is, uh, in, in education, this is an existential question, you know. Uh, should, uh, should our instructors be great professionals, right? Uh, that have expertise in the, the, the area of, of their profession? Uh, or should they be great teachers? Should they be an expert in the art of instruction? Is it possible to have both? How do you resolve that tension? Yeah? Yeah. Jer Jeremy, you want to 
And then, Start? And then Ivan gets to start. Okay. Um, <laughs> oh, one of the things that we realized is that within every discipline, but in the one that we focus on, computer science, software engineering, the really good people actually tend to be quite good teachers. The reason for this is that most serious work nowadays is done on teams. The apps that you use every day, the software you use every day, most of the time there's tens, sometimes hundreds, or even thousands of engineers working on that app, which some people think is crazy. Like, how can there be, you know, 100 people working on Facebook Messenger? But there really are hundreds of people working at once. Therefore, to be good, a good software engineer in the modern context, you need to be able to communicate with a team. And to be a good team communicator, you usually end up acquiring or having the skills that make you good at explaining to others what you're doing, how you're doing it. And so if you're looking at education, and if those of you who were in the session uh, prior, uh, Robin from Minerva was talking about how lecturing is not a good format, but audience participation, or more broadly speaking, student active learning is the way to go, then you realize that looking for someone who's a great orator, someone who is good at giving speeches, actually is what you might think is a good teacher, but is not what you're looking for. You're looking for someone who is, can work with others well, can explain what, they're do, what the work they're doing to their team, and then translate that skill set and essentially treat students like an extension of their team, maybe as new members on their team, and as a result, giving the students a very industry-focused learning, but also leveraging a type of communication that exists in the workplace and not trying to bring those people into some sort of artificial lecture format. And that's, it's, it, we, I'm not saying that we've solved the problem, but that's kind of how we think about it, the type of profiles we look for at companies. We want to hire them to be our instructors. Ivan? So I, I happen to have the experience in both sides in the professional world as an architect and engineer where I've worked for 12 years and as a professor where I've been teaching for 10 years. So I, I kind of see both sides of the industry. You don't look that and, old. I'm sorry? You don't look that old. Uh, yes. <laughs> New York life, you know, keeps you young. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, for us, it's really about combining both. You know, I, I think um, to, to answer your question, it's really hard to be a great professional and to be a great professor at the same time. So what we do is, in fact, we put people together. Usually in our courses, we bring some of the world's top experts on some subject, either through companies or universities, we bring them in. At the same time, we, we bring the people who are instructional designers who are experts on teaching methodology, and we get them to work together. There is another thing that teaching in a classroom and teaching online, it's a completely different story. So many times professors who've been teaching for many, many years in a classroom, you put them in front of a camera and they don't know how to, to behave. So, you know, there is always a moment of adjustment. In our case at Build Academy, we always work with real-world problems. So we basically create these case studies or we work on projects like complex infrastructure projects where we need a lot of expertise and we create the curriculum specifically for these projects. We have modular content and we target specific needs of the clients, of the professionals in order to solve these problems through uh, project alignment. So our methodology, in fact, tends to be something that is directly applied to the project, and therefore all the outcomes are much more direct and much more efficient. So one of the trends in software engineering has been pair programming. So we think there's going to be pair teaching. Yeah? Yeah. Pair teaching? We, we do it too. Pair teaching? It works really well. Nice. OK. Um, given, given the time, uh, one of the uh, interesting questions that I hypothesized is, and in particular, when I was reflecting that uh, Iversity and Build Academy source their content through partners. Um, and uh, the, other, the other panelists here have to create all their own content themselves. There are trade-offs and benefits uh, of each model. Um, but like, uh, based on what you know about the other organizations here, which organization do you have a little bit of envy for? You're like, I wish we could be a little bit more like this, this organization. Uh, and, and why? Where does that envy come from? Yeah? Martina, do you want to start? <laughs> you always give me the best questions. Well, you, you, or, 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 I don't, okay. Yeah. Um, let me think a little bit. Oh, we can, we can pick on... Let's start in the middle, Hannes. Okay. Who do you envy? Yeah. I mean, we, we started out uh, working with uh, these institutions, universities that I mentioned before, uh, and there it, it was fairly sort of... Uh, hands off, you know, we gave them some advice on how to produce courses, but they basically did it by themselves. And quality was, you know, uh, um, across the board from really great to not so good. Um, <laughs> and, uh, uh, and that's something where, you know, when we now ventured into professional learning, uh, creating these pro courses, we said, okay, we need to have a closer um, um, 
look at this and, and we need to have more control. So we, uh, there we're much more invested and work much more closely with the people that create the content. But still, of course, you can't have expertise in all these different fields. So we still have a subject matter expert, as Ivan explained, that you know, may have experience in the field and may have experience teaching, but doesn't know how to teach online. So we have so to So who do you them. envy? Who do you envy? And um, <laughs> when you have people that you can pay directly, that you can also tell what to do, uh, I think, I mean, you guys, that's the situation that you have, and I assume you as well. Um, you know, that is something that makes it easier. With the experts, it's always a partnership relationship, not an employment relationship. So we, we have more leverage than we had in the past, but less than if we just, you know, paid them to do the job. Okay. So that, that and, I think sometimes it makes things easier. Gonzalo, you, you know who you envy? Yeah, uh, makes cool. Okay. Uh, first of all, well, I, I think every, every mo or our model should tend to not, uh, uh, let's say, to be free at front, so no, no payment up front and students be paying for the tuition. But as we haven't raised capital yet, so it would, it would have been very hard for us in terms of working capital, but we're definitely thinking about uh, going in that direction, especially in, in Latin America. But you're not beholden to me, whereas Jeremy <laughs> is beholden to me. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Congrats. The, the, the joke here is that Make School has raised capital from Learn Capital, yeah. which is why we can offer courses for free and wait till the students take tuition later. <laughs> yeah. So now Michael is kind of my boss, so I have yeah. to be. Um, I, I, I envy uh, Ivan because you've piloted an education model that right now is being hyper applied to programming education in an industry that is not programming education. And I think this is wonderful because it proves that a lot of the things that a lot of us are trying. Uh, can translate perhaps to other industries and other areas of study and also gives hope that um, this educational revolution in the Silicon Valley that right now is all about making new programmers, programmers, teaching programmers to be programmers <laughs> can finally extend beyond uh, uh, to other, other things. Yeah. So I think that's awesome. And, and I envy Gonzalo uh, from uh, Ironhack because he has offices in Madrid and Barcelona, which are two <laughs> amazing Miami. cities. Miami. In, well, Miami, not so much. No, but, uh, <laughs> I'm in New York, so you know, way better. But I think Madrid and Barcelona are two amazing cities. And in fact, we are thinking of expanding soon into Spain because some of the largest construction companies in the world are here in Spain and some of the best architects in the world are here. So we are uh, soon going to be approaching uh, a, even further the uh, Spanish market. So that's mm -hmm. why... Gonzalo, yes. <laughs> All right. If you work so in the built environment, talk to Build Academy. So then uh, my word would be that I think that generally we have opportunity to learn from each other, definitely. But uh, coming from the school, physical school, uh, you know that our business model is not scalable, so that would be one point to mention. On the other hand, that is also the truth that it's not our, not our priority right now because we are well, focusing on people inside and working with them. That's what we want to do physically. Uh, but uh, how yeah. many learners did you have last year? Well, as I said, we have 750,000. Uh, 750,000. Yeah. We had yeah. about 1,000. About 1,000, yeah. yeah. So, so it's a difference. scale, control, yes. scale, control, trade-offs. Um, all right, well, thank you so much, panelists. We've, uh, we've come to the end of our time here. Uh, obviously, all of these uh, wonderful people would enjoy questions and engaging with you as the day goes on. Uh, so thank you very much.